Good morning and welcome to CN Jenkins. We're so excited to have you today. And if you want to stay involved on our YouTube channel, make sure you leave some comments, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you like our page. Hey, we're so happy to have you and welcome. Hope you enjoy. In their poeticness, almost nobody can tell you anything about the life of Zachariah or Isaiah, except maybe Isaiah's call in the year of King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord. But what about before the year before King Isaiah died? What about before the poetically crafted and dramatic scene in the temple where smoke filled the temple and seraphim with six wings covering their face, feet, and back and forth they flew across the temple crying holy 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 what about Isaiah's life before all of that or even after that you can't tell me anything about that but you know his poetry only the most avid biblical scholars such as the Reverend Dr. Jerry Cannon can give you any information about the these mysterious men of God the, these poetic prophets. Their life stories get lost in the shuffle, but their, their poetry, their poetic utterances become their poetic voices and live forever. Uh, the portraits they paint with their pens live in our hearts and minds forever. Timeless and breathtaking scenery, like all good poetry, they leave you in a different place after being confronted by their power. Consider the poetry of Zechariah. You don't know anything about Zechariah's life, but you know his poetry. Not by my might, nor by my power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You know his poetry, but not about his life. What about the poetry of Malachi? Anybody know anything about Malachi? I don't know much about Malachi, but I do know that if Pastor Cannon uh, starts quoting his poetry, y'all will help him out. Bring all the tithes into to the storehouse and there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith says the Lord of hosts if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room to receive their poetry lives forever. Who here knows anything about the life of Micah? You don't know much about the life of Micah, but you know his poetry. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what the Lord desires and requires of you to act justly and love mercy and to walk humbly with God. All true poets, all true prophets are poets. The poetry of these prophets lives on and on. Jeremiah, the prophet, was no different. He was a poet. His imagery concerning the word of God tells us it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. You know his poetry. Uh, one of his haunting questions still echoes across the century. Is there no balm in Gilead. Though many choose to attribute the today's book of Lamentations to Jeremiah, nowhere in the book uh, is the author identified. Yet one of our most important sources of information about the terrible condition of Jerusalem and Judah about uh, and around the Babylonian attack in 586 BC comes from Lamentations, this book of poetry. Throughout Lamentations, the poems are ones of mourning. Verse after verse, the writer cries out to God, whom he or she feels has deserted them and the people. The tone is bleak and God does not speak. Though desolate and hurt by God's absence, the writer and his people continue to have some hope that God will restore them. In fact, the poetry in Lamentations verse 3, I'm sorry, chapter 3 has become one of our favorite hymns. But this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. However, the writer goes on to tell how at one point the troubled nation looked to other nations, Egypt to be in fact. That is where we see in verse, in chapter 4, verse 17. For help that never came, we looked until we could look no longer. We kept waiting for help from a nation 
that had none to give. How poignant. Can't you hear the agony? Can't you hear the poet's cry for help that never came? We looked until we could look no longer. We kept waiting for help from a nation that had none to give. Now this story, we all know from Bible study. You remember Sunday school in Isaiah's 36th chapter where the Assyrians attacked Jerusalem. Uh, that was while Hezekiah was king. The people of God were expecting Egypt to come to help them. And in fact, it is in uh, Isaiah's 37th chapter that uh, Tahaka, the king of Anubia popularized on the Budweiser Great Kings of Africa charts. I said the Budweiser Great King of Africa charts. Okay, the church done showed up. Y'all want to act like y'all don't know nothing about Budweiser. Uh, you don't have to drink all the Budweiser. The commercial said, this Bud's for you. Not all of them, just this one Bud is for you. Amen? All right, all right. Let's go. We're going to go on and preach and have some church this morning, ain't we? Anyway, word got out that Terhaka and his army was headed to attack the Assyrians. But Isaiah tells us that an angel of the Lord went into their camp and killed 185,000 soldiers. And at that point, Sennacherib withdrew and ended his siege against Jerusalem. Several years later, Jer in Jeremiah's lifetime when Zedekiah was king, Nebuchadnezzar set up another siege against Jerusalem. Once again, the Egyptian army uh, headed in to help Israel. And when Nebuchadnezzar heard they were coming, he retreated and turned back. Um, so there was a precedent. Uh, there was a precedent. They were counting on the Egyptians to come to rescue them again. Um, but for whatever reason, this time, they went back home. Word that they were coming was normally all that was needed, but it never came. Uh, the text says we looked until we could look no longer. We kept waiting for help from a nation that had none to give. So why did they turn around? The text doesn't say. Did they uh, know about the previous wasted trip of Terhaka? The text doesn't say. Was there a sandstorm in the desert? The text doesn't say. Was there some sort of mix-up in communication? Did somebody miss a text message? Did somebody miss an email? Or the text doesn't say. What happened? Why did they go back? We may never know. All the poor it tells us is that we looked until we could look no longer. We kept waiting for a nation that had none to give. Now that is the surface level of what this poetic pericope is saying, but on a deeper level, the poem speaks voluminously to many of us. Uh, am I safe in here to talk to us? Uh, uh, well, um, us. African-American, Negro-colored black folk. <laughs> Us. Uh, been looking for help for centuries from a country that has none to give. If you've not had the opportunity, I suggest you look into the Works Project of the 1930s. Therein you will hear the original slave narratives, painful firsthand stories of an enslaved people and the torture they lived through uh, looking to a country for help that had none to give from Angola to Alabama, from the Caribbean to the District of Columbia, from Madagascar to Macon, Georgia, from Sierra Leone to Wilmington, from Benin to Greenville, from Senegal to Charlotte, North Carolina. We looked until we could look no longer. We kept waiting for help from a nation that had none to give men and women stolen from their country, stripped of their humanity, poked and prodded, felt on and whipped, raped and sodomized at will by Christians, praise the Lord, and Muslim, assalamu alaikum. Why do we know that, you ask me? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Well, you remember in the first picture, the beautiful castle on the shore. Uh, you've seen it before 
those are the slaves' castles at uh, uh, Gory Island, amen? But uh, just inside of that compound, uh, if you go on uh, in the slides, and just inside of that compound, you'll see this building. Um, that building is a church. Um, that building is a church, we know that, because there are markings inside with crosses and the ichthos, the fish, amen? So actually what would happen is they would go into the church and praise the Lord and then go and rape one of our ancestors and then they would come back and give a confession and then go back and beat and sodomize one of our children and then they would go back and, and, and read a, a, a forgiveness or something like that and go back and kill one of our children. They looked till they could look no longer kept waiting for a nation that had none to give. That's why I'm never surprised, you see, uh, or taken aback when America ca -ca, uh, does anything, especially when there is mention of constant contradictions of its claims on Christian values and its demonic treatment of our most vulnerable citizens. And so the saga goes on across the many miles from this uh, slave capsule, our ancestors were marched, marching along sweltering coasts. These ancestors of yours and mine, great, 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 great grandparents, they walked and they watched and they waited and they looked and they kept waiting on the slave coast of West Africa. They were herded into these castles in tiny rooms, sometimes over a hundred in a space that was about as small as this quail off, a decrepit castles in dark rooms on Gory Island and Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, in Benin and in Ghana, they were actually fit more for mausoleums. They looked like vaults of the dead, not housing for the living. If you go there, you can still smell the blood and the feces on the floor as they peek through windows looking for help from a nation that had none to give. Imagine, imagine if you will, walking into the doors of these slave castles, these doors, these places of no return. Imagine just standing in this place knowing that this, this was the end. This terrible place that you'd heard so much about, this terrible place. The mystic theologian, Howard Thurman, asked the question, what was it like? What was it like to be a black mother, to hear your baby crying helplessly in the next slave pen and not being able to go and help her? What was it like? What was it like when you first realized and finally realized that you would never see that baby again? What was it like? What was it like, black father, to hear the screams of your wife being raped repeatedly by callous captors or even being forced to watch while they did what they would? And if you move to be shot dead if you attempted to protect your wife or daughter. What was it like? What was it like, black child, to see your daddy killed because he tried to protect you? What was it like? What was it like to watch your own flesh and blood grab a ball and throw it over the edge of a ship and say, before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to be with my Lord? What was it like straining, looking through tiny windows, looking around for a flickering light? Just somewhere, we don't know, but it looks like the poet in Lamentations had an idea when he said we looked, we looked until we looked no longer. We kept waiting for a nation that had none to give. And although the Middle Passage and all through the Bermuda Triangle, we looked and through uh, plantations in Cuba and Jamaica, we looked amidst the burning sun in Belize, we looked in the muck and mire of Mississippi, we looked, we looked, and we looked, and we looked. 1776, around the first week in July, when the colonies became a nation, new hope was born. We became a nation, so they say, that was conceived in liberty. Uh, we just knew that this nation would not abide slavery in her body politics, so we started waiting for this nation. Eleven years passed, and she adopted her constitution, and hope unborn 
was still born. Because the Constitution not only allowed slavery, the Constitution condoned slavery, and the Constitution pointed out that the African was not even to be considered a full human being. But we kept waiting. We kept waiting. Then came the Emancipation Proclamation. The racism superseded the Emancipation Proclamation. Yes, they fought a whole civil war in an attempt to hold on to slavery, they, they amended the Constitution three times. Number 13, abolished slavery. Number 14, made the African people citizens. Number 15, gave us the right to vote, but there were still segregated facilities. Uh, black folk on one side, white folk on the other side. Segregated schools, white children upstairs, black children downstairs as we celebrate today this Women's History Month. Let us not forget that it would still be 50 more years before women of color or any women for that matter had even the right to vote and we continued to spiral down in this dark abyss but we kept on waiting we kept on waiting then came the Ku Klux Klan and then came the neo-Nazis and then came the skinheads and then came Richard Nixon and then came uh, Reagan and then came Bush, uh, Daddy Bush and then Baby Bush. Y'all remember we were cast into two wars that we could not win filled with lies about weapons of mass destruction but we kept on waiting. Then came our first black president. We saw a new day dawning, yet within months of his election, people were standing on tarmacs and putting their finger in his face and disrespecting him on the courtroom uh, floors for eight years. He and his family would have to endure this, but he served with dignity and respect and not a single scandal. But for recognition of that, we're still waiting. Then came the daily reports of murders of unarmed men and women by police and government sanctioned agencies who admitted in every case that each one was unarmed. At one point, one black person was being killed by some agency every 28 hours. And about this time, the, the straight problem became the gay problem. And since 2016, since that election, violence against individuals who identify as LGBTQ, I, and A has more than double each month and continues to rise. And, and we keep waiting. We keep waiting because now we're all suffering the same thing. You see, in 2016, to get y'all back for, for making them suffer for eight years, with that Negro president, they elected the son of darkness. My country, tis of thee, finally took their hoods off and exposed itself like a baby running through the house with a saw diaper to the whole world, electing a maestro of chaos to begin a decline in civility like this world has never known. And since that election, I'm sad to report to those who haven't heard racism, misogyny, xenophobia, sexism, homophobia, and every other thing that opposes God's dictates of love and righteousness are on a constant rise, even with our new president and the first black woman in the office a vice president, the whole country is on full tilt. <laughs> Intentional whirlwind of instability echoes throughout the universe. This pandemic, the first one in over 100 years, wars raging on every shore. But isn't it funny? Isn't it funny? And I'm not laughing, but it's funny. You see, we have extraordinary compassion, and it's rightfully placed, on the people in Ukraine. We should. 
Um, every prayer is needed and every inch of humanitarian aid is well deserved. But isn't it funny? Um, that bombs were dropped by Israel assaulting civilians in the Gaza Strip the same week. Isn't it funny there was no crying out for them? Um, isn't it funny that Facebook has given a whole way to circle your face and show your support of Ukraine, um, but about four areas are in constant conflict in Mother Africa as we speak. I wonder why. I wonder why. Um, give me black and brown folk don't deserve the same attention for 500, Alex. Um, but we keep waiting. We keep waiting. Um, um, see, we're going to get some attention to the matter when the people running from their lives look like their grandmothers and grandfathers. But when they look like me and you, not so much. Alas, see in Jenkins, perhaps we are at an intersection like the people in this Lamentations text. Perhaps because we played church and ignored our brothers and sisters in need for so long, rather than following Jesus, we made a gospel and built mega churches and started worshiping Jesus. Ooh, somebody didn't get that, so I'm going to back up and go through it again. See, rather than following Jesus, we worship in Jesus. What's the difference, preacher? I'm glad you asked. See, all you got to do, but Rufus, to worship Jesus is show up on Sunday morning and make you a good worship face. Y'all know. And if you know how to do the Holy Ghost get back, you know. And don't, don't mess around here if you don't got a step. Woo! See, worshiping, you can do on Sunday. But following is a change in life that you do all week long. It's repeating and repeating over and over again the way of Jesus. Jesus said, follow me. Mm. But we decided not to, to follow, but to worship because we're lazy. And prosperity preachers getting fat and greedy. As verse 16 of today's text says that God scattered the people, God's self no longer showing any regard for our priests and leaders, though many seem content to keep waiting. Waiting for this government of these yet to be United States that have nothing to give, founded on thievery and greed, savages from the start with ice cold water running through their veins. They have nothing to give a country that would spend over $700 billion on a war but can't fund education cannot be trusted. Over 60 dollars on a prison industrial system but cannot be trusted. Uh, you keep looking for love from them but a country that has spent 10 billion dollars in foreign aid to so-called Middle East, P.S. that's Africa, um, sending 10 billion dollars to the Middle East but has left Michigan without easy access to clean water for over seven years. That government can't be trusted. A country that won't feed or house its homeless veterans Veterans cannot be trusted. A country willing to spend $21 billion to build a wall between itself and Mexico cannot be trusted. Defunding our health care system for women can not be trusted. Well, preacher, who can you trust? Is it all bad news? Is there no hope? Are we to stand back with a handful of bad promissory notes that have come back from the Bank of Liberty marked insufficient funds? That's what Dr. King called it. Trust this, we got work to do. That's what you can trust. Reverend Tracy Blackman said, there is no place in biblical or human history where God has ever acted without human agency. And I don't believe God is about to start right now. That's just me now, I don't believe. In other words, God won't you you, 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 
and me to get to work. Um, pandemic, yes, but we got work to do. Uh, wars and rumors of wars, but we got work to do. And God is with us. I think I'm going to get a little Baptist right now. Can somebody look at somebody and say, God want us to do something? Uh, in other words, God has first of all given us the capacity to build and maintain our communities ourselves. I can remember a time black folk didn't even talk about government when it was time for help. We just talked to each other. We never loved on the government because we knew that lover could not love us back. Stop spending money on their stores and stop spending money in their malls and spend your money with black folk. Uh, folks that's ready to love you back. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said again on April 3rd, 1968, we must always anchor our external direct action with the power of economic withdrawal. See, you have power. You can spend your money on the one that loves you rather than the one that does not love you. Come on in here. You have the power and God is with you. Stop looking for love outside of your community. The Zulu philosophy of Ubuntu reminds us that God gave us everything we need. All the resources are among us. Nambi, the Bagangu creation story means you are love. Oh God, show us how to love, uh, not beyond us, but within us. Teach us to love our black selves. We are the people who believe in justice and believe in love of ourselves and your righteousness, oh God. Show us how to love by the true meaning of the word. Come on, Helen Baylor. Teach us to sacrifice expecting nothing in return. Teach us to give our lives away, becoming more like you, oh God each and every day. Give us more than enough because our words are not enough. Our words are not enough. Our Facebook posts are not enough. Our tweets and Instagram posts are not enough. Show us how to love, how to actually love. Teach us to look no longer to a nation that has no love to give. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for joining. Do, do subscribe. Do share this message. Watch it over and over again. I believe there's some education in the words. Those who are here, social distance, you can come and greet the pastor. Just wave at him. Let him see your eyeballs. But most important, let us continue to go now and do what God calls us to do. May the grace, may the peace, may the love of Jesus Christ be with you this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Have a great week. God bless you. We love you.